All right, so we'll start here. So uh, this is uh, Pat from Anti Flag. You want to say hi? Yes. Hello, everybody. My name is Pat Medic, and I play drums in Anti Flag. Nice little intro. Guys. I, I, I gotta I'll put that out there so everybody knows who I am. Well, at least there's only one Pat. It's not that like I'm Chris, and then everyone's like Chris. Yeah. Pat yeah. Number three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's funny because at the office um, at AF Records, we have Chris Doe. So there's Chris number one, Chris number two, and then Chris Doe, which is essentially Chris number three. Uh, must be weird being the only one in the band that doesn't get to run around on stage. It's, it is. I, I am running in place. I would argue that I'm running in place by hitting that kick drum and the hi-hat all the time. All right, um, so uh, let's start off right. Okay. Uh, so we got a bunch of fan questions. we got a bunch of questions we put together. So, okay. Uh, Number one, do you think the Secret Service has a folder for you guys yet? That's actually very interesting. I hope they do, and if they don't, I'm going to be embarrassed that I don't have it, that I'm as old as I am and don't have a Secret Service file or uh, uh, an FBI file. What We had this um, great idea of getting a friend of ours who loves um, Freedom of Information Act, and she was going to go and dig out our file. But the issue is if you don't have a file – and you ask for it, they create a file for you. So you don't know whether you really have a file or not. So it's a little bit of an issue. But I, as a, as an activist who's been in a band for 20 plus years, if I don't have a file, I have failed. So there you go. Have you guys ever wanted to stray away from making music about politics, or is that? No, I have no interest in music at all. I only have interest in politics. So I would rather stray away from music and go <laughs> all into politics. Is that what you would be doing if you weren't in the band? No. Um, politics is shit. I don't want to do politics. <laughs> but I do like activism, and I do like um, uh, flipping off the powerful. And uh, that is uh, – people don't realize how fun it is to go to protests and do activism because you're essentially taking on giants, and you're annoying giants. And that is in immensely pleasurable and, and fun, and, yeah, it's awesome. Well, you guys are big, big in you know charity, you know the uh, underground activism alliance. And stuff yes, like that. you want to talk about that a little bit? Well, yeah, we've uh, throughout our um, our existence, we've realized that there are a lot of great organizations that do the hard work. Amnesty International, PETA, Sea Shepherd, um, they are doing the the grunt work day to day. It's really hard work. But what we can do is, as a rock band, we can say, hey look at these people who are doing this hard work and let's celebrate with them the hard work they're doing. And if you want to get involved, here's ways of you getting involved. And that has been um, very helpful to us and helpful to the organizations. It's helpful to us because a lot of young people come to us and say, I'm really angry, I'm really passionate about this issue, I don't know how to get involved or help out. And it's a, uh, it's a way for us to say, hey, this is so, these organizations are really awesome and they're doing great work. And um, but yeah, so and we've all we also have had our own um, nonprofit for years. Um, but being on tour as much as we are, it's it's easier for us to work with people who have a proven track record of getting shit done. Are there any other charities or you know nonprofit type things going on, especially around Warp Tour? Um, yeah, well, there's um, uh, Love Hope Strength, which is doing uh, bone marrow registry where they swab your cheek, get your DNA, and um, and then if somebody matches your bone um, marrow profile, you can donate and really save people's lives through um, through um, giving them a little part of your body. Um, there's also Safe Spaces out there who helps with people who have had um, trauma in festivals or just in life with sexual abuse and abuse of any sort. And you can come and talk to them at the, at the festival, which we just had a great um, seminar the other night where a woman from um, Safer Spaces came and said, you know, there's a lot of women who come and men, but mostly young women who come to festivals and predators come to festivals to, uh, to take advantage of them. So this is a pl way of fighting against that and making people aware, A, that there are fucking creeps out there and be careful and be if you um, if you are um, assaulted by a creep there's somebody to help you out um, so kind of on that same note there's a question you could skip it you know it's a little touchy subject yeah. but the whole dicky situation yes the dicky situation um, if you're an asshole you're an asshole it doesn't matter whether you're in a band or not um, there's a whole discussion about free speech and whether we should have 
free speech and I am a firm believer that you should be able to say the most fucked up shit you want but I'm still gonna call you an asshole if you're say fucked up shit and then the other argument that's been on the internet a lot is that punk rock is supposed to be about saying whatever you want and and I agree but the point that is being missed is that punk rock is about saying whatever you want to the powerful and to the people who are have more powerful who are more powerful above you you're always punching up you're never punching down and when women make uh, 80 percent less than uh, men do when women of color are abused at rates and uh, significantly higher than white men when you start to attack down you just look like a douche and um, and that's yeah so it's unfortunate that that happened on warp tour and uh, hopefully uh, um, everybody involved can have some rational thought and maybe make different choices in the future. It does feel like Warp's been kind of like evolving year over year. I mean, how many times have you guys played Warped at this point? Uh, a lot. I don't know exactly <laughs> how many, but a lot. But yeah, there's always, you know, Warped Tour is unfortunately at its best, it's a place okay. where young people from different sheltered cultures can come and see that there are um, other ways to live. You can be gay, lesbian, trans. You can be uh, fucked up metalhead. You can be any of these things when you come from these small little area towns or whatever in your high school where you don't aren't exposed to these ideas. So Warp Tour at its best is saying to young people, hey, there's a whole bunch of other ways to live out here. Maybe you might want to try these out. At its worst, it's a place for misogynist creeps to take advantage of young women. And hopefully we're moving towards the uh, the place where everybody can express themselves how they feel and not be ex uh, exploited. You feel like, uh, especially in the you know current political climate, how you know, everything's kind of a shit show. Um, how has it really affected kind of the punk community? It shows that you've seen you know with the division that's going on. Well, um, what Trump has really done is well, he's done a lot of horrible things on so many levels. It's like when you have a con man who's taken over the government, it's it's a it's a mess. But what it is done on a on a one-to-one -one level around me is he has legitimized racist bigoted behavior and it is he has allowed your racist uncle to come out of the closet and feel like he's vindicated and being able to say really fucked up shit and I want everybody to come out of the closet except racists and bigots I want them to go back into the closet and realize that their beliefs are uh, don't have a place in 2017 even if you're um, even if the president has those beliefs does make it easier to you know who know who to avoid. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, it's funny. I I had a uh, a guy who said I love when uh, when racists wear fucking swastika t-shirts and stuff because he said I know that guy's an asshole. I don't have to talk to him. I have to go near him. I'm like yeah, I guess that's one way of looking at. It. I don't want to see what swastika around, but I, that's another way of looking at it. Um, yeah. So uh, you guys have been around you know long enough for this to even be a legitimate question. But if uh, someone's gonna make a movie about you guys, who would play who? Um, I have no idea. We've gotten some crazy answers today asking that question. Yeah, <laughs> I I don't know. I'm not uh, I'm not really into actors that much, so I don't, I don't have any good answers. I wish I could. Do you yeah, got we any? had some George Clooney. <laughs> yeah, for, yeah, they go for the top. Anthony yeah. Hopkins. So. Yeah. <laughs> I, let, you know, I I will, I will. Here's what I'll do. I'll go. I will be played by Divine. <laughs> so, and Just throw that, it out. yeah, so that would be fun, and uh, and I guess. Uh Maybe Justin would be by be played by Boy George. We just have a weird. Uh, I don't think device Divine even still alive anymore. I have no idea. Yeah, so. um, uh, favorite band currently on Warp Tour with you guys? Well, I got a lot of them. Uh, Sick of It All is fucking awesome as always. War on Women. Third time being called out. Yeah, War on Women is great. Bad Cop, Bad Cop, Municipal Waste. Um, yeah, uh, just fucking great bands all all over the place. Was it a good time touring with uh, Real Big Fish? Real Big Fish is great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's got to be the yeah, best. It's, it's awesome because their songs are so uh, so fun and, and catchy, and they're just they're just out there to rock and have a good time. Any fun uh, post-Warped plans? Um, yeah, we leave Warped um, in like a week and a half, and then we take a little bit of time, uh, go home and feed the goldfish, and then go to Europe for three weeks. And then we come home from that and then go back to Europe and – Go on tour and on tour and on tour and on tour and never Life go home. The tour yeah. musician, yeah. yeah, that's what we do. Um, you well, can be on tour. Oh, sorry. 
Oh no, I was gonna ask, are you guys gonna take a break from touring anytime soon and no. start writing? No, well, actually, we we really fucked up. So uh, I will <laughs> yeah. tell you a little bit of our lives. In if you're a a well organized band, you have a record cycle that you release a record, and then at the end of the record cycle, you take a little bit of time off. You work on a new record, and you write a new record, and you start the process again. Rather than doing it that way, we just stuffed writing in between two tours. So we are just going from one record right into the next, and uh, we'll be on tour for the rest of our lives. Um, right so there's a lot to write about. That, that, well, that was one of the reasons why we um, we stuffed it in, is because there was so much shit that we needed to say. Um, so yeah, so we have a new record that's coming out at the end of October, or sometime, in the, I don't know the exact date, but sometime October, November, we're gonna have a new record coming Hopefully out. Hopefully you come back to New Jersey soon. We will be back in New Jersey. New Jersey's great. Fucking Star Overland Ballroom is the weirdest show place, but the greatest <laughs> shows ever. So, and, yeah. Uh, you know, that, that's all I got for you. If you have anything you want to shout out to the fans. Uh, no. Uh, just, yeah, we got a new record that's coming out. Keep an eye out for that. And um, as always, don't be an asshole. It's a good way to end it. There you <laughs> go. Thank you very much. That's awesome. Well done. Okay.